What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean. And throw those old graphics cards in the trash can, because the RTX 2080 Ti is here. Okay, maybe don't recycle those GTX 1080 Ti's quite yet, but there's a new king for consumer level cards, and today we're taking a look at EVGA's 2080 Ti XC Ultra. These new RTX cards from Nvidia, dubbed Turing, are replacing the Pascal 10th generation chips, and these have dedicated ray tracing hardware, and they also offer improvements in compute performance, DirectX 12 performance, and they have the new faster GDDR6 memory. In comparison to the GTX 1080 Ti, the RTX 2080 Ti has almost a thousand more CUDA cores and almost 10 times the ray tracing potential. This EVGA card is based off of NVIDIA's reference PCB, but it adds EVGA's custom two-fan cooling solution and an insanely thick heatsink. This is the thickest card I've ever owned. It's like a Kardashian holding a bowl of oatmeal. It's that thick. It takes up like three and a half slots at least in your case, and you're probably not going to want to put anything in the slot under it because that would probably obstruct the airflow somewhat to the card. With that big ol' heatsink though, it manages the temperatures quite well. The fans have a unique characteristic where they have the little EVGA emblem printed all over the blades, and I think that's not just for cosmetic reasons, but it's supposed to reduce drag or, you know, fan noise or something like that too. The fans on this are able to turn all the way off when you're not using them, and uh, you know, that's going to help you have more quiet operation for basic tasks as well as extending the life of the fans themselves. On the opposite side from the fans, you have a pretty solid feeling metal backplate. It has some cutouts for some lines and the EVGA logo, but it seems like it does a pretty good job of holding it together. Sandwiched between the fans and the backplate, you have that metal heatsink array. And then on the facing side, you have two 8-pin power connectors and a RGB LED logo. The biggest downside I would say of this card is the plastic shroud. It doesn't look as premium as the rest of the build. I do like how the facing side of the card looks in all its garish RGB glory though. The big ol' metal heatsink and lit up RGB logo are cool to look at even if they're a little bit over the top. Okay now the looks and the build quality really don't mean anything if the performance isn't there. So let's see how this 2080 Ti does in some games and how it stacks up against its predecessor, the 1080 Ti. Jumping into 3D Mark Time Spy. You can see that the 2080 Ti is giving about 30% better performance. Both cards are sitting right around 100% usage, so I think this is showing a pretty good representation of the difference between the two. Temperatures are really same across both cards, this and the 1080 Ti Strix. Next is Far Cry 5, and the frame rate difference is a little tighter in this game. I think that can partly be chalked up to the 4-core 7700K starting to show its age a little bit in modern games. It was still very smooth though, and I think that the overall graph it looks a little smoother on the 2080 Ti. Next up, Forza Horizon 4. And the 1080 Ti already really did a good job in this game. You can run this on a pretty low spec card. This is a 1440p Ultra and it's getting pushed right to about 140 frames per second on the 2080 Ti, and we're a little under 120 on the 1080 Ti. Both of these are really good experiences, but the 2080 Ti, how it's you know sitting right between 130, 140 all the time, is just a more stable and fluid experience if you want to get real picky. Both of these cards provide an experience that you can be more than happy with playing this game at 1440p though. Just recently, Nvidia via a driver update unlocked ray tracing capabilities for the 10th generation cards also, and I've run some demos on a 1080 Ti, so let's see how this 2080 Ti stacks up against it. Here we have the demo for Justice Ni Shui Han, I think I said that right, and this is showing some different ray traced reflections and demos, and you can see a vast disparity between performance on the two cards. The 2080 Ti is keeping this pegged at 60 frames per second the whole time, and if you look up at the afterburner overlay, it's only using about 50% of the card. Meanwhile, the 1080 Ti is sitting pegged at 100%, and it's only getting you about, you know, 15 to 20 frames per second usually. I think this really illustrates what the gameplay difference is going to be like going forward as more games start to pick up on the ray tracing technology. Here we have the Star Wars Elevator demo. And on the left is the 1080 Ti capture, and on the right is the 2080 Ti. 
you can see it's sitting at the 48 frame per second limit and the 1080 Ti is struggling at about 10 to 20 frames per second. You can really tell a big difference in the fluidity of the picture when they're side by side like that. I just want a new Star Wars game that doesn't suck. Come on. Okay, the last ray tracing demo we're looking at is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This doesn't have uh, ray traced lighting or illumination, but it does have ray traced shadows. And I think that's why the 1080 Ti can still do a pretty good job. You can see it's keeping up close to 60 frames per second in this scene. It does drop pretty hard in the next one though. Now even though this game is only tracing the shadows, this scene must hit it particularly hard because this really brings the 1080 Ti to its knees. You can see here the frame rate's basically halved going between the two cards. And here in this final scene, the frame rate is a little bit closer. You can see the 2080 Ti is keeping it at close to 60 frames per second, while the 1080 Ti is about 25% slower. I think the 2080 Ti could be doing a little bit better. You can see it's only getting like 95% usage, and I think that's because of the 7700K. Maybe if I had a 9900K in there, it could get it up to 99% usage and get us a few more frames. Well, to sum it all up, the RTX 2080 Ti is not the best value card out there. It doesn't double performance compared to the previous flagship, it doesn't give you the most frames per dollar, but it is the most powerful single card out there. It delivers faster performance than any other consumer GPU out there, including the brand new Radeon 7. If you're trying to run your games at 1440p, 144Hz, or 4K 60Hz, and you don't want to have to worry about dropping the settings while keeping the frame rate up, this is the card that you want. Granted, this is the only one of these cards that I've had the chance to mess with, but the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti XC Ultra has delivered crazy performance, and uh, it's kept the temperatures really in check. During games, it's been in the mid-60s to mid-70s, typically when it's under load, and that's pretty decent. That's even with a slight overclock on the memory and the core. If this card fits your budget and your case, I'd say give it a shot. You're not going to be disappointed with the performance you get. I'll drop an affiliate link to this and some other good cards down in the description. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, give us a like and a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.